this is what I see a lot in our in the wellness space is we think that we should be in tolerance all the time. So it's like, you know, you've got, let's say you have these personalities in your life and they're full of rage. You don't want to be around raging people. Okay. But I really think it's the ego mind plays a trick on us and tells us like the most spiritual thing to do is to tolerate the rage to have them over for dinner and we shouldn't feel like we want to reject that rage. Okay. As mothers, anybody who loves a child, whether you made a baby, you're a caregiver, or you're in a family, any human who loves another human, you want to create conditions of healing and wellness for that child. You, we would never let our children be around a raging person. That's not, it's not healing. It's not conducive to wellness. So God doesn't want you to suffer. God wants you to create conditions of healing for yourself 24 seven. So you say peace out to the rage. It's an act of love for yourself. And you can simultaneously hold that raging person in love. You have faith that they're going to come to their heart that their rage is some kind of expression that's going to heal them. And you always keep your door open for those people. If you ever need me, I am here. When you want to talk, I am here. You can still even rage a little bit. I will still be here for you. I'm holding you in love and I'm going to go hold myself in love. And then we can move on. But it's this, the transmutational act is you love yourself enough to create a calm environment for yourself. So your own inner rage, the part that's been being reflected by the other person, starts to calm down. And then there's less rage in your external life. But it's really the act of you loving you that's dissolving the outer appearances of rage. It's not just you saying, okay, rageful person, catch you later. It's you loved your own stuff first. And I love the way you describe inner child healing work. Cause again, it's a term we've all yeah. heard of. And I'm yeah. actually as a parent of a toddler yeah. who's learning how to be in the world, you know, it's, it's that process of reparenting myself so that I could just hold space and love for her to, you know, figure out her emotions or express and, you know, mm -hmm be messy and, and just love her and hold space for her so that she's mm -hmm. safe. And, um, you know, part of that process is acknowledging her feelings rather than trying to change them mm -hmm. and just holding her with love. Mm -hmm. And so as I do that for her, as I learn about how to be a conscious parent to her, I'm like, Oh, then I can do that same work with my inner child. Mm -hmm. And you write so many beautiful things, but it's, you know, the goal with the inner child is not to make them more mature or heal them. It's like that inner, or, or it's not a thing from the past. I'd love for yes. you to go into this. Yeah. It's, it's the inner child, that, that ego, that unhealed part of us that's yeah. showing up um, and to just acknowledge what they're feeling, acknowledge their presence. Don't reject, mm -hmm. don't suppress, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what, what you judge as a negative feeling or an uncomfortable mm -hmm. feeling and just really sit with it talk to it, uh, accept it, see it, you know, acknowledge it, all, all the things that you do for your little three-year-old, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's so, it's so profound. Um, so I'd love for you to talk about that for a little bit. First thing to understand about inner child work, your inner child is not you when you were eight years old in this lifetime. This is not about you going back to the past to look at your family of origin stuff. And all that stuff that legit happened that you might need some therapy for. It's not, it's not like a real time thing. Inner child is just a term, a really useful term for your unhealed self, for your subconsciousness, for your unconsciousness. Um, and the reason it's a useful term is because when we hear child, it immediately puts us into kind of gentle, caring, nourishment frame of mind. And that's what the subconscious needs. 
all that gnarly stuff that's trying to get your attention. Your attention is your love. Love me, love me. I, something, this wound needs love. And I'm going to tell you it needs love by giving you some anxiety. I'm going to tell you that this there's this topic down here that's kind of festering. And so to get your attention, they'll, maybe there'll be a breakup or a blindside or something like that. Are you paying attention to me yet? Are you conscious yet? Are you going to just stop and be still and eat clean and get seven, eight hours of sleep and rest yet? Because I need love. That's what the inner child is saying. <laughs> so, um, you know, it used to be when I would, when I do a speaking gig, you know, I would get all, um, motivational about it and like I'll get all pumped up and do like jumping jacks in my hotel room before I went down and I would tell myself like all these great things about how great I was <laughs> I was gonna you know I was gonna slay it and um it doesn't address the actual fear of bombing of looking bad which is all unconscious in the basement of my psyche unhealed wounded inner child stuff so now, and this is such a counter intuitive move. Now, before I do anything where there's fear, really anything before there's fear, um, I have a conversation with my unconsciousness, my inner child. And I say, what do you need? And my inner child will always say something. And this, this should, this is an indicator. Usually the inner child speaks so simply. It's not going to say I want ice cream and pizza and a rock concert it usually says, I want rest. And so there was one time, like before a gig, my inner child said, um, I want to hang out with good people afterwards, hang out with your friends. Like, Oh, she wants to hang out with people who love me. Okay. And, um, and also like, and I love applause. I love this. It's like, Oh, it's okay for me to want to go on stage and really rock it. And then after I've taken care of the most fearful, tender part of myself, then I can do anything. It's like being, you know, once your child is fed, you're good to go. I, my ego does not need any more bravado. I got this. I've taken care of the trembling part. And then I don't say, and this is really my approach to fear now. Let's please stop trying to crush our fear and overcome our fear. Your fear just wants attention. Take your fear with you. Fear. Hey, I'm your friend. I created you. You are my fear, baby. What have you got to say? Yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. Great. I heard you. Now you can relax. And I'm amazing. And I'm the mother of my life. And I'm actually aware that I am an infinite energy being. I am actually love. So fear, you're coming with me to work. You're coming with me into this courageous conversation I had. I'm not leaving you in my therapist's office. I'm not telling you that you're a loser. So you got to sit on the porch while I go be a winner. I'm taking you with me because I am truly awesome. I got room for fear and being genius and loving. Yes. Oh my gosh. I mean, this is, I got emotional there for a minute because I'm literally, it's all about, I mean, this book is such a gift. I'm not even blowing smoke right now. It's, it's, I needed this. You, it's like a God, God send to me. Um, I, I don't even know what to start. I just know it's that. It's a relief, isn't it? My, a, my experience, relief. the response is even when I just give the title to someone, oh, it's your new book, how to be loving people exhale. I see this kind of physical shift and Really, if I had to come up with a new subtitle, it would just be like, how to be loving, give yourself a break. Mm. And really, the book is about reverence. So I can say like on one level, self-acceptance, lots of people who have read it say, I thought this was going to be a book about how to be better in relationship and about loving other people. This is about really accepting myself. Yes. Cause that happens. You are so much more chill and inclusive and loving with everybody else. Um, but you, you mentioned something earlier about the, you know, the conflict and inner and outer. And I think we have, there's tolerance. Tolerance is better than intolerance. 
And then there's acceptance, which is like, acceptance is we're going to embrace what we've been trying to reject. Just break, you know, everybody listening, just what do you been fighting with yourself about for so long? Like for me, it'd be my, you know, arrogance, you know, I really see my arrogance in my career at different times and created some shame or manipulation. I think so, so much of the energy in relationship is just, we're manipulating to try and get the love we want, you know? And I feel shame when I try and like, just like phrase something a certain way. So I get a certain response. What if I actually was friendly with my manipulation and my arrogance, the parts of myself, I really don't, I don't want to be that anymore. Um, I'm really rejecting those parts of myself in the name. Like this is it rejecting parts of ourselves in the name of being whole Mm. makes no sense. Impossible. So I have different conversations now. I say, Oh, okay. All right. Danielle's arrogance. Come, come, come in. Just relax. Just relax. I got room for you. If you show up tomorrow, I'm still going to be here. What, what's really going on? What do you want to say? And then, you know, and then I'll get any, you know, whatever wisdom nugget I'm supposed to get. But um, I think that's how we should treat our fear. That's how we should treat our anxiety. Last thing anybody wants is a panic attack. But what if not only did you listen to it, but you went one notch up. So you go from the tolerance to the acceptance to reverence. Oh my gosh. My arrogance has taught me so much. It's made me a more loving person. What you can't be, there's nothing to be more thankful for than becoming a more loving person. Your anxiety, your fear, whatever your trip is, look what it's done for you. It's waking you up. You're closer to God because of it. Thank you for listening to the Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. Oh, and make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And if you feel inspired, we would love you to rate and review us so that we have the opportunity to reach more people. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram for some behind the scenes fun and more inspiration at at Heal Documentary and at Kelly Gore. Thank you so much and be well.